OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to our session, a Hyflex Teacher Guide. Tips, Tools, and Engaging Activities. My name is Jia Sun. I work for San Diego College of Continuing Education. Uh, I'm an ESL instructor and also the ESL program uh, High Flex and Digital Literacy Coordinator. I'm gonna let my colleague Johanna introduce herself. Hello, my name is Johanna Gleason. I also work for San Diego College of Continuing Education and I'm a High Flex instructor. Um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this in a while, but I was a contributor to this, um, this High Flex Teacher's Guide that we created at our district. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. So before we get started, we do have two quick questions to help us understand our audience. Uh, first one is, what is your experience with High Flex and uh, what discipline do you teach? Hi, welcome. Welcome, Sit down, please. Okay, so there are two ways you can access the poll. One is uh, use your smartphone to scan the QR code or you can go to 3wmindy.com and use the code on the screen. That's what happened with me too. Me oh, see. sorry. Let me, give me one second to present. It should, yeah, that's me. It should start. Oh, okay. So you just put in that question and go to, okay. Go to the, there are two questions and you could go to the next okay. one. Oh, so now since I closed out when you did that, then you could still open it Oh, okay. So yes. No problem. problem. Sure. Yeah. Okay, is it big enough? Are you getting the high flex question? With what? They're just getting the discipline. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess because I'm presenting the second question. We can do a show of hands. Okay, yeah. Questions. questions. Yes. Okay, I guess we're already on the second question. <laughs> yeah, but uh, so have you uh, heard Half-Lex before? Everyone heard Half-Lex? Yeah, that's why you're here, okay. Uh, have you taught Half-Lex before? Anyone? Raise your hand if you've taught Half-Lex. Okay, good, so almost half, okay, good, good. So others are heard half flex before, but never taught half flex and interested to learn more. Right? Great. Oh, great! Great. How Thank many you. admins do we have here? Oh yeah. Okay. And okay. Quite a few. How many people who have no experience with high flex at all, but are interested or curious or want to tell someone what to do? Looks <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of. We all want to tell people. All of the. Above, <laughs> all of the above. Well, let's say it. <laughs> What's a good definition of hybrid? It's hybrid plus uh, flexibility. Yeah, and we will explain in the next slide. Okay, thank you. So we have quite a, a variety of um, disciplines here. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. You're right. And high flex, um, you know, is available in all of the disciplines, which is great. Okay, child development. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So. Um, yeah, that was a really good question, and that's what we will cover first. <laughs> so this is what we will cover for today's session. Uh, we will briefly talk about what is HyFlex. Uh, I will, sh yes, yes, come in, please. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. So uh, we will also introduce you uh, the SDCCE, uh, three different uh, technology setups. 
uh, we will share some numbers, what's happening with our uh, college HyFlex, and also uh, the main focus of today's session is the HyFlex teacher guide. And later on, Johanna will do a detailed overview of what's included. So as she mentioned before, we are two writer, uh, writers of this program and also our other two teachers. We did this program, um, we did this project during summer 2022. And uh, to be honest, this is more of a, a teamwork because we have a high flex meetup. The teachers meet uh, monthly. We brainstorming a lot of uh, teaching tips, best practices uh, for high flex. So this has included a lot of great ideas of the whole team. And a main focus of this guide is high flex friendly activities. It's included a lot of detailed lesson plans. So we will show you two activities. One is a information gap activity. One is using a Jamboard. And we hope to leave some time for questions and answers. And here is a picture with my high flex class I taught in fall 2022. Uh, this is me, this is my um, PA project assistant, uh, Levitt Arcia. These are my students, and this is the most dynamic, diverse uh, group I've ever had. Students are from all over the world. They're very dedicated students. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see the physical in-person students and also the Zoom, the, the Zoom squares <laughs> for yes. the students. All together. Joined. Okay. I'm going to stand over there because I just can't see from here. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Okay. So first the question, what is high flex? As I mentioned before, it's hybrid plus flexibility. And this modality was first brought up by uh, Dr. Brian Beatty in uh, 2006. And for a high flex student, it's required to do asynchronous work. And for our college, the platform we are using is uh, Canvas. So students access Canvas to do their asynchronous work. And for the synchronous session, students have the flexibility to choose either to attend the session on Zoom or in person. And they have the flexibility throughout the semester. They don't have to make any commitment at the beginning of semester. They don't have to make the choice. They could change how they participate on a daily basis. Okay, so, um, so that's really empower our students to take control over of their own schedule and learning because as we know, our students, they have very busy life. They have children at home. They have part-time work and they may have two or three part-time jobs so they don't have control over how they study. And HyFlex is really giving them the opportunity being able to have the face-to-face -face interaction when they can, but at the same time not missing any coursework because everything will be available online. Can I just add one thing? Yes. Um, in yes. addition to the fact that the students can choose whether to attend in person or um, on Zoom for the synchronous sessions, we record all of our classes mm -hmm. so that if somebody's unable to attend on a particular day, either in person or on Zoom, they can watch the recording later. Yeah, thank you, Johanna. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here I'm gonna introduce you, you need to go again. three different technology setups. The first one is very simple. Just use your own laptop with the webcam and microphone. And this is our colleague Ingrid Greenberg using her own laptop teaching a Netflix class. Now this is not the best technology to teach, but you can do it this way. The second one is what we have also in this room is the OWL camera. It's a 360 camera that uh, the camera automatically tracks the active speaker. Uh, so the great thing about this technology is, of course, you don't have to worry about the camera uh, setup view. It will automatically follow you. And also, it's very easy to carry move from room to room. Very simple to set up, not a lot of teacher training required for this technology. Now, uh, we, we piloted this device in um, fall 2021, and some teachers did complain about the sound quality because when they went back to their Zoom recording and watched the recording, they found out this turnout sound, a lot of noise, not very clear sound. And also, this device was originally designed for video conferencing in a much smaller room. 
So if you are too far from the device, um, the students on Zoom may not be able to hear you clearly. And of course, uh, the students on Zoom won't be able to hear everyone in the classroom. The third setup is what we are currently using in our college is the smart technology with ceiling microphone and a wall camera. So this is the microphone uh, panel. Each high flex classroom, we have two of these panels in each room. Uh, it has the best sound quality. So I taught high flex last semester using this technology. I went back to my Zoom recording it was super clear. It was like I'm teaching a fully online class using my own microphone. And uh, I don't have to yell to the microphone and the students in every corner of the classroom can be heard by the Zoom students. And it has very good quality of noise reducing, echo reducing, so super good quality. Uh, the camera cannot follow the active speaker. However, it has a three uh, camera presets that you can save before you start teaching. So you can change the uh, camera presets when you are moving in the classroom. And this is our podium computer with a, a touch screen control uh, content box that controls what you are streaming uh, to the Zoom students. Okay. Okay, now I want to show you some numbers. So for our school, this is the high flex active enrollment table. So we started piloting using the OWL device in fall 2021. And as you can see, it's a steady growth except the summer 2022, but we always have smaller program. So in the college level, the high flex is growing. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Uh, this is continuing education. Yeah. No, not just yes. Yeah, not just yes. Mm -hmm. When you say active enrollment, is that simply the students that were enrolled in the fall, or is it exactly the students that are choosing to go into the summer? It uh, includes both of them. It's the student who enrolled and did show up, so, so have some hours on your roster, not the student who enrolled and never showed up with like zero hours. Yeah. But it's, so it's also inclusive to those students that they're in that class, but they're not currently in two of those classes. So they're not in the same class. It's every student who's enrolled in the class, regardless of whether they attend in person or on Zoom. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot. It's a lot of students. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.
and I had that sort of exact scenario you described where students were getting to trying to get to my class homework and they would be on Zoom and then they so they didn't feel like they missed anything or oops I'm not going to go to class because I don't have a writer yet mm -hmm. they were able to say no to it yes yeah yes. it's so great it's very exciting yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> someone else had a question oh I was just wondering if you noticed that the different kinds of the schedule had like different blocks of the day yeah uh, as I mentioned just my own class when it's like a testing days they know as so much like seven to nine or oh nine time to like that kind of thing like have you noticed it kind of that way no and, no and as we said we're not really reporting that data or recording like the who attends which it would like an individual teacher might notice mm -hmm. a pattern mm -hmm. but they might not share that with anybody else yeah mm -hmm. sorry we had a question here too no i was going to say i can empirically speak to that oh Mm -hmm. uh, given the pandemic and the constraints of being at home, we uh, have two big screens mm -hmm. and uh, we do have a limit of number of modules per week. Mm -hmm. So we can only do three. In the morning, it tends to be uh, more people because it's not a working profession, so we do a lot of work from home. And uh, you know they have what's known as a once a week or two a week or mm -hmm. three a week or whatever that is. Mm -hmm. um, whereas my evening class, Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I assume they're always giving you the answers to the same thing, but I mm -hmm. always have to ask them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had another question in the back. Um, I was just going to say, um, are you not restricted to your time to get kind of past the, the like the session where are people coming in, are people staying home, and just realizing that the, the whole philosophy of the class is like very I don't know why we're not recording. <laughs> well, because High Flex for at least for our school district is considered as online. So we take the attendance by census dates. So that means the teacher, I mean, the teacher can record who is attending today's session, but actually it's not required. So students don't have to attend the uh, synchronous session. They could always go back to the Zoom recording and do the asynchronous work. So, yeah. Any other questions? No. Okay, and this is a student survey I did for my class, uh, end of semester survey, and I included two high flex questions in the survey. I know it's a little bit small, so I'm going to read it for you. So the first question is, would you like to be placed in the high flex class in the future? And as you can see, 73.3% of students said yes. 20% not sure, leaving just one student said no. And I went into that student's answer, and he did mention he didn't like any of the online components of the class he wants fully face-to-face, -face, and that's the class he's taking this semester, okay? <laughs> yeah. And uh, the second question I included is on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 as the most favorite. How much did you enjoy a half flex class? And as you can see, we have 40% chose 10, and we have over 85% choose 6 to 10. So that's, in some level, enjoy the half flex class. So I'm pretty satisfied with the survey, and I want to share one uh, a story about one particular student. The students spend a lot of time at the end of semester trying to find a high flex class. This is a level four class, and she should go to a level five. However, on the campus that's close to her where she lives, there's no high flex level five. So she'd rather travel 15 minutes further to a different campus to be able to place in a high flex class. And she told me the reason is because she really liked the face to face. She doesn't enjoy the online part so much. However, with her work schedule, she cannot attend class three hours a day, 15 hours a week, and that's our 
face-to-face -face class schedule. So, and she doesn't want to miss any coursework. So really high flex is the modality allows her to have that face-to-face -face component when she's able and also not missing any assessment, missing any coursework. Okay, and I think Johanna has something yeah, else I to share. I had a couple of stories I mm -hmm. wanted to share too. I've, I've heard um, some, some teachers be a little negative about high flex, like maybe, I've actually heard people say things like, it, it's something the administration's forcing us to do so that they can get more enrollments, it's not really in the best interest of the students, it's not really pedagogically, you know, the best choice. And I, I, the, the stories I wanna share, I think demonstrate why I really disagree with that. Please remember, I'm a high flex teacher. I'm not an administrator. <laughs> I'm not trying to, you know, to change anyone's mind here. Uh, but one story that I, what I want to tell is just about myself. I'm currently, in addition to uh, teaching and having a family and, you know, having a busy life, I'm taking a Spanish class, and it's face to face, and that's my preferred um, modality for learning. But like Gia's student, and like many people who are adults and who are, uh, you know, who have very full lives. Sometimes I can't go, and my class is not high flex. If I miss it, I miss it. Um, I do have you know, some Canvas, but I've missed the in-class lectures and the, um, the practice that we do, and I wish I could be taking a high flex class right now. I personally, I kind of envision in my own mind that high flex is the teaching of the future and that maybe right now we're talking about high flex, but in 10 years it's just gonna be school. <laughs> At least that's my hope, mm -hmm. okay? And the story I wanted to share, Gia mentioned that um, Beatty was uh, first publishing about High Flex mm -hmm. in 2006. Mm -hmm. High Flex is not new, but it really exploded during COVID because we had a need for it. And I attended a conference last summer, and there, there we were at a, at a High Flex panel presentation, and this one woman shared how, it, I mean, it was many years ago, she was doing her master's degree up in the Bay Area and she had medical issues and she was going to drop out. She was not going to be able to complete that degree program, which, I mean, we can all imagine, you put a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money in your degree programs. Mm -hmm. Who wants to drop out, right? And she was um, offered the opportunity to complete the degree program in a high flex modality, which at that time we were not so familiar with as we are now, and so she was, hello. Come on in, join us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so she was able to, to, to complete that degree program um, while managing her, her medical issue, and she was able to earn her degree, and there she was presenting to us as a master's degree holder. So um, I really, I mean, as I said, I hope and I believe that in the years to come, we're not going to call it high flex anymore. We're just going to call it school or education. Um, okay. <laughs> And so am I going to the next slide mm -hmm. now? Okay, so with that in mind, so as I said, HyFlex isn't new, but in fall 2021, when we started using it at, um, at CE, at Continuing Ed, it was new to us. So um, we were using materials that were designed for in-person teaching. We had a lot of training um, and had developed a lot of materials for online teaching, but we felt kind of like pioneers trying to use what we knew and to make it suitable for high flex. So, uh, you know, I was, I was talking to a colleague once, because, you know, learning new things can be a challenge. And I was saying, you know, what we really need is a teacher's guide, but there's not one because, <laughs> because we're the first ones doing this in our, um, in our district. And so, as, as Gia said, we had these meetups where we got together, shared ideas, shared things that worked, talked about challenges, figured out how to overcome those challenges, and we just thought, like, you know what? There's no teacher's guide. Let's make one. And that's what we did. So um, in our teacher's guide, you can see our nice little cover here. We have um, High Flex best practices. Um, so we talk about before your class starts, the kinds of communication that you should provide with your students, um, things you can do during class uh, to make, to engage both audiences simultaneously, um, ways to set Zoom up in advance so that it's optimized for your high flex teaching, um, just you know the whole sort of gamut. 
And we also uh, recognize, in our case at least, many of our students, um, I think especially at the more beginning level English, uh, are not, uh, are not like um, confident users of technology. So they have some difficulty with um, their, even using their phones for Zoom. Sometimes it's the first time they've seen Canvas. Sometimes they have difficulty even using their keyboards and things like that. So teaching digital literacy, um, at least in our low level English language classes, is an important component of teaching um, in the high flex modality. And then we've provided, this is the kind of teacher's edition, if you sort of like it. We've gone sort of step by step, unit by unit, in a couple of the textbooks that we use, which is the Venture series. Um, and we've taken the materials um, and the content from Ventures and suggested and recommended methods for making it high flex. So a new teacher who comes in can look at this and use that sort of in conjunction with their Ventures textbook and the Ventures teacher's edition and know how to make those activities high flex. And then of course we have a whole variety of additional uh, resources and tools that people can check out, um, you know, according to their own needs and interests. So we're going to go ahead and show you the high flex guide. G is going to try to do this on her computer while I talk because I was having difficulty with the angles and things like that. So we have a very nice cover page. And then we have, as we move down, uh, a full table of contents. And it's digital, so um, you know all of the table of contents links to the pages. So if I want to, uh, you know, if I want to learn about introducing digital literacy, I can just click on that, and it'll take me directly to that, um, to that page. So I don't have to read through everything else first. Okay, but as you can see here, we, well, maybe you can't because it's small. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got the high flex best practices, and I, I feel like with high flex, it's and maybe with online teaching in general, it's very important to communicate with your students before the class starts so they know uh, what the Zoom link is, they know how to get onto Zoom, they know maybe, in our case, we use Canvas, so we also will um, provide them with instructions for how to access Canvas. Um, and yeah, as you can see, um, even in our district, um, the teachers might, the new teachers might not know how to email their students, so we provide them with instructions for how to find your students' email addresses and how to give them, how to send them a mass email. Okay, um, so we, as a new teacher, we've got some sample class schedules um, so they can imagine what their students are doing, what they're doing. Um, we've got these links that they can email to the students which uh, explain how to join Zoom from a PC, from an iPhone, um, and from an Android. And they're, we're not going to show those, but they're really simple. We, we're, we're very fortunate to have a colleague who put together a bunch of very basic ESL, lots of um, you know, speaking slowly, lots of visuals, lots of words on the page. And of course, they're all accessible so students can watch the, the transcript too. So they've got detailed instructions for how to join Zoom. Um, again, we've got detailed instructions for how to find your English class on Canvas, also instructions so that the students can put Canvas on their phone if they want to do that. And we're very fortunate at CE to have um, instructional aides who can attend high flex classes. Just because managing those two um, audiences is difficult, we're very fortunate to have um, an instructional aide who can assist the teacher with managing both audiences. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have one PA. My um, PA Levitt uh, is was in my class, and there were two or three days that she was helping with the placement office. We're doing the CASAS testing. I was managing the whole class myself. Yes, it, it was definitely more juggling, and I wasn't able to do a lot of more like interactive activities because. Uh, usually, I facilitate the in-class groups. I work with them in small groups, and my PA would go into the breakout rooms. So, but if it's just myself, it's very challenging. Yeah. 
uh, average like attending a synchronous session, I would say uh, 2018, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. With no aid to help mm -hmm. yeah. That was a really good yeah, yes. we're we're very fortunate at CE. I think that we have um, the instructional aids. Mm -hmm. um, I've I've taught. I mean, I as a, I probably can't manage as um, a high flex instructor without an aid to do small group activities and breakout rooms mm -hmm. without the aid. I think I need the aid for that. Um, but apart from that, I feel experienced enough that I can manage most other things. Mm -hmm. um, it's better to have the aid. One of the things that my aid does is he goes through and he mutes the students who um, can't mute themselves. Yeah. <laughs> so the rest of us can hear. Okay. Very helpful, yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, so then we also have advice for during the semester, you know, how to keep in touch with students. Again, these students are, um, you know, they, a lot of them need, need uh, training in digital literacy. So we have some advice here about keeping in regular touch with the students throughout the semester by email or um, you know we have some other Google Voice or Pronto or something just to make sure they know what to do each day and when we're actually logging on when it's in person when it's um, zoom only and things like that um, and then we've got tips about how to use the technology I think most of us who are teaching at least in our at, at mid city our one location in CE most of us are using that permanent technology that um, that Gia showed you with the, the wall camera and the ceiling microphones. Um, so we've got some instructions here for how to use those. We've got links to job aids to show you how to set up your camera presets, how to turn everything on and make sure it's working. Um, if we're going to carry on going up, we've got just tips for, um, for the instructors. So one of the things that, uh, as Gia mentioned, the, the, the ceiling cameras are so good that you can hear as a Zoomer, you can hear everything that's going on in the room. So if the rumors are having a little side whispery conversation, the Zoomers can hear it all. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something you know that we need to make sure the students know because they might not, they might not want everyone to hear about, I don't know, whatever they were doing last night. <laughs> Okay, and you know, we've just got like, you know, some advice here. Check often with your students to make sure that they can see your screen. I think we've all been teaching on Zoom and suddenly realized that the students can't see what I'm talking about because it stopped sharing. So, you know, here we recommend that they check in often uh, with the students. I always recommend that people join. I, I start my Zoom classes, I start my Zoom on my computer and I join on my phone. So I can keep an eye on my phone and then I see when the, the screen suddenly for no reason stop sharing. Um, we've got a lot of um, screenshots of what they're going to see when they're setting Zoom up to show them how to do things like share sound, how to uh, set their, their course up before the class so that their settings are all you know, going to work the way that they want. We've got lots of really friendly tips, like if you're going to be showing slides or Google Docs, use large font. And our experience, as you said, almost all of our students are joining on their phones. Mm -hmm. So if you're using like, you know, font size 14 or something, they can't see it. Um, use the largest font that you're able to use. Um, we have another nice little, um, oh, is the image not there? Can you go up a little bit so mm -hmm. we can see Dee Dee? Yeah, so one of the things we teach the students right away is hold your phone horizontally so that you can see a bigger picture of the screen. <laughs> okay, um, as I said, we've. The settings are all, you know, we advise how people should set the room up before they start. Um, and uh, we've got a bunch of tips for how to uh, manage the breakout rooms in the most efficient way possible. Um, again, if we want to keep going down, so lots of like what you're going to do uh, on Zoom, lots of tips. This is how you should set up your, um, your classroom before you start. And then, uh, as I said, we're very fortunate that we have um, um, instructional assistance. So we have some, in, some advice for the, the, what they can do, what you can't really be asking them to do, <laughs> and um, the best ways to sort of engage them and use them um, during the class. Can we, can we go back down a little bit? Because Sorry, back up. Oh, I meant up, back up. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, no, back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Also, we, re no, no, I'm sorry, down. Down. Oh, down, oh, sorry. <laughs> the other up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. 
<laughs> yeah, so this is one of the big tips we like for the breakout rooms. Our students who are new to digital literacy sometimes um, don't know how to join a breakout room if it's an option. So we loved it when Zoom suddenly made it possible to just force them into breakout rooms. And we always advise that everybody is using that, at least with the, the lower level students. Okay, so now we can really go up. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, yes, so this, yes, it is so much. But once you're doing it, you know, once you're doing it regularly, it's like anything, it becomes kind of second nature. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about professional development? Yeah, yeah, and okay. we do pro provide uh, development, pro uh, professional development, and also for our, this, this agreement just passed in uh, January 2023, the teachers who are teaching HyFlex get 16 extra hours compensated at their non-teaching classroom hours for teaching HyFlex. So they can get the tech training, extra workshop, everything they need to be prepared teaching high flex. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So we offer trainings or we run trainings pre-semester, like before teaching starts, mm -hmm. to get teachers who are unfamiliar or want to attend or want extra practice. We run sessions to show them what to do. We have lots of videos that mm -hmm. we've made so they can watch to learn to, um, to get the equipment working. Um, we've got... Um, we, we have, as Gia mentioned, this, this meetup. So it's voluntary. People don't have to attend. But gosh, I mean, I, when I first started, I started attending all of them because it was so valuable so that we can learn from more experienced instructors. We can share ideas. We can talk about problems. And we run problems. Sorry, go ahead, Diana. Well, I was going to say, we, we run like workshops periodically. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I'm actually running a kind of drop-in practice what you want to practice uh, before you actually do it with your students. And we run that high flex so people can come in, they can practice with the equipment, people can zoom in, they can practice taking control and putting people in breakout rooms. They, you know, they can try something new in a low stakes, like non threatening environment before they practice live. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, oh. mentioned that at our district we have Gia and mm -hmm. uh, Joanna, but Gia is our head technical leader. So when I first started with high flex, I was like, I've been teaching high flex for the last 10 years. It's really a little familiar, but different. Mm -hmm. So Gia um, spent one-on-one -on -one time with me, because she mm -hmm. kind of wanted to go. Mm -hmm. So that's another advantage of the high mm -hmm. that I was able to get into the high flex, too, is that I just don't have to do something with my student company where they have to spend time with me. And so it was a practical thing for me to be able to do that. So I think that's another advantage. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I do provide like weekly one-on-one -on -one mentoring hours for teachers. So if they have any questions, they could sign up for those one-on-one -on -one hours. And also, as Johanna mentioned, we have monthly meetups. So everyone get together, share their ideas or questions. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, in addition to being a teacher, I'm a high flex mentor. And I also have mm -hmm. hours available um, <coughs> if people want to meet with me one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Um, yeah, if, if your district can provide that, that would be awesome. How am I doing for time? <laughs> you get, yeah. Until you, okay, a little bit faster. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go kind of quickly. We have a bunch of tips. You can see how long it is. Well, uh, where you're going to see um, uh, for teaching digital literacy to students. So this is all digital literacy, digital literacy, digital literacy. And Gia, if we can go back the other way um, for a moment. I wanted to click on a um, little, little, little more the other way. Um, yeah, I wanted to show the keyboard. So all of these are links. We have lots of links to, uh, to, to videos, to slides, and to um, um, Google Docs. And if we can open this, this is just for example. So in some cases, you know, we have students who don't even know how to use a computer keyboard. So we've developed these slides to teach them how to use a computer keyboard. We have the numbers. We have the letters. OK, we're going to look again. And sometimes we need a capital letter, so we need to, you know, touch shift and plus. So, you know, it really, it's not only teaching the teachers how to teach, but giving them materials that they can use with their students who need to learn digital literacy. Okay, so we can close that and go back down. Uh, I mean, everything, Zoom, QR codes, more, so much, for, I mean, we teach the students literally, yeah, question? We, we teach the students, they don't know how to go to chat. They don't know how to click on a link in chat. 
we can teach them that. They don't know how to get back to Zoom after they clicked on that link. So, <laughs> so we have we have videos and job aids teaching them how to do how to teach their students how to do those things, how to teach their students how to use reactions. I mean, everything you can think of. And yes. So one of the things we do with HyFlex is we have these, um, op these meetings that are synchronous that you can either attend in person or you can attend online. You have the choice. We also have Zoom only meetings. So we'll have a you choose, we'll have a Zoom only, and then we'll have a you choose. I teach those things during my Zoom only meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how to mute, how to unmute, things like that. Maybe. I, I think so, compared to like fully online class, because they do have the choice to go to campus. And we have a, a walk-in Thursday that we have people that they can go to that office or computer lab and get help to learn how to use Zoom and Canvas. And that is something that they need to use in class. So, and they are already right there in the school building, so they could get help. Yeah. Yeah, we had a question back there. Yes, and we don't, but I, I, most of them bring their phones. And so when mm -hmm. I'm teaching HyFlex in person, I ask that all of the students in person join on their phone. Um, and one of the, I'll, I'll get to this a little bit later when we talk about activities, but I do put activities in the chat and I want the students in the class to do those activities too. So they're also learning the digital literacy. Some questions over here, yes. Uh, it was for us what we did at uh, our school, especially during, uh, closure was that on Fridays were tech day so we would have people come in if they registered for class we would have them come in Friday to learn how to zoom learn how to do basic things on the because it was mainly do zoom mm -hmm. and then my class was using canvas in particular how to how to go into canvas how to connect with me on canvas so that way when they would start Monday they had at least a good two hours with me in a small group onboarding them so that was constant once I onboarded them, just that reinforcement constantly, mm -hmm. so that way it would be an initial take a few hours, but then they persisted through the whole semester. So we noticed that our persistence rate was actually higher yeah. just by spending those two hours with them onboarding them. Was it mandatory? Well, I made it mandatory, yes. For the same reason, because I just didn't want to do a sign up and then just fail because of technology skills mm -hmm. and because of the academic. Right. Yeah. And I don't have that number included here, but uh, we have the uh, data from uh, fall 2021 to uh, spring 2020, from fall 2020 to spring 2022. Uh, um, but the data shows that the persistent rate compared in our school, uh, it's high, uh, high flex is higher than uh, fully online. Yes. So, it's yeah. it's very high. It's like around ninety five percent or something, isn't it? Yes, it's yes. very high uh -huh. persistence rate for high flex. Mm -hmm. As I said, people are grateful that this is finally available to mm -hmm. them. I think. Yeah. Did we have another question or comment? Okay. So I wanted to show you this. If you can just make it up a little bit higher. higher. Um, so we do. I want to show Didi. We do have all these like digital links that we can send, and of course we can put things on computers. But one of the tips we give, the basic tip is print as a teacher print this stuff off, laminate it, keep all your cards right next to you, and then you can tell the students, unmute, I can't hear you, unmute. Mm -hmm. And you know, so that's, that's a really great tip, and we do have a link in here somewhere to all of these here. things, so that yeah, you can, as a teacher, link to that, you can copy it, you can print it. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, okay. Yeah, so again, moving on, there's lots and lots of uh, Zoom tips and, tricks, then we've got all kinds of teacher students, how to use Canvas stuff. Again, documents, slides, videos, anything you can think of. Um, and we'll move on a, a little bit. So, and then this is, this is I think, uh, my favorite part. This is kind of like what we want to call um, our, the, the teacher's edition. So we've, 
we're using in our two lowest levels, Ventures ba Basic and Ventures One, and we've gone um, unit by unit, like unit section by unit section, and given, um, and okay, they're tiny little words, I know you can't see them, but we've given suggestions for things you can do for both groups at the same time, things you're gonna have the roomers do, and things you're gonna have the zoomers do. So the teacher has instructions for uh, how to present the material to everyone first, and then what you're gonna give to the roomers, and what you're gonna give to the zoomers, or what you're gonna make the roomers do, and what you're gonna make the zoomers do, and things like that. And I had a couple ones I wanted to highlight. Um, Are there's, doing it simultaneously? Um, it depends on the activity. So I wanted to show some activities. There's one that's called Items in a Classroom. Can we find that one? Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's probably unit two, right? Yes. It's, I, think it's, I think it's the other way. Items in a uh -oh. class. I, I think we're oh, still okay, in unit sorry. one. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, okay. Let me use the table of content. Unit two. Yeah, this is it. I think if we go over here. Mm -hmm. And I want to click on the, the link. Okay, so uh, is this okay? Yeah, maybe click on here. This one, the Jamboard. Yeah, you know, I think it's. I wanted a. There's a Google Doc, a Google okay. form. Okay. Yeah, so can we maybe? Items in the classroom, right here. This one? No. Google form. <laughs> Items in the classroom. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> okay. It, it's a. It's a Google form. Maybe down a little bit more. This is it. Yeah. Google form. Okay. Okay, so this is one activity that I'll, that I'll do. The students in the classroom have their books and we look at the book and we do the activity in class. I put a link in the chat and it's a Google form. The first question is um, their name and then you know I'm playing the audio over the, um, the Zoom and the students at home on Zoom are able to, um, to do it on Zoom. I get, the, I get the results of their form so I see that they were participating. I can assess whether they're learning. And um, you know they're actually interacting physically with Zoom and things like that. The students in the class are doing it you know, in their books or on a handout. But a lot of them, the more advanced ones, will do it again on their phones. And that's one of the reasons I think it's great for them to have their phones, because A, they get the extra practice. B, they're getting the digital literacy practice. OK? So, um, so I guess we can probably keep that up. Let, let's go back and let's, I, I can use that to demonstrate the next activity a little okay. bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one of the things I might do then is uh, send a similar form like this to the Zoomers and I'll stand here in the classroom with the rumors and hold something up. It's a ruler. The rumors call out ruler and the Zoomers click on the box, right? I show another, another uh, picture. You know, we're moving down, the rumors call out what the picture is, and the zoomers select it. So I can see, uh, you know, that I'm, I'm engaging both audiences. The rumors are doing something, the zoomers are doing something. And then I can, uh, like, freeze my, my, my camera so that the zoomers can't see the screen anymore. Is this how I do it? Hold on. So that the rumors can't see the screen anymore. So uh, this is what I'll do. I'll, I'll, like, I can't remember what we call it. Like, um, what? Or uh, phrase? mute, picture mute, oh, right? Picture mute, so yeah. I picture mute the screen, but I'm still in the Zoom meeting with the Zoomers, and I'll put a picture on the screen of a pencil or a stapler or whatever, and the Zoomers have papers, so the Zoomers are calling out what they see on the screen. Pencil, and the Zoomers have to circle. Stapler, and the Zoomers have to circle. So the, it, the audiences are both working um, together at the same time, and they're engaging with one another. And you can see how you can extend that with all kinds of activities. We have three pictures of people and they have to circle the one who has glasses and a mustache, for example, right? Um, so, so this entire, I know you can't see it, all the pages, but um, all, of the, all of the activities in the guide, chapter by chapter, have ideas like that so that teachers can, can um, you know, they don't have to think up their own things or even create their own Google Forms or uh, docs. They can just make, we've set it up so they can just make copies of all those docs to use them as they see fit. Um, 
in class. I'm sorry, I should have written the, the units that these were on. How am I doing for time? Do we need to move to the next thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we'll go to the next. So anyway, you'll get copies of this. You can look through all of those activities and things like that. And this is um, this is an information. So information gap, you know, it's similar to what I described to you. Uh, here's an activity that I that I created. We'll go ahead and watch that video. So this is an example of a video that's available to um, our teachers so that they can watch that and they can get that idea. And um, also you saw an example of an activity that we use with the students. And I mean, another thing I'll do also is um, after we've done that activity as a group where the whole group shouting out, do you serve food? Do you uh, clean buildings? Um, I might have them do it you know, one on one, okay? So Muhammad here in the room. And Gala on Zoom, Muhammad, ask Gala. And then they, they do you know one-to-one one one answering. And do you know, we call it ABA, <laughs> where you've got like a dialogue where A says something, B says something, A says something. I do that a lot also with the students, with uh, room being A, Zoom being B, room being, and then flip it. Zoom's A, room's B, and then one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Muhammad, you're A. Gala, you're B. Muhammad ask Gala, that sort of thing. And then I just wanted to show you yeah, some flashcards. Okay, so this is another, I mean, this is really very similar to what we were talking about already. This is something I would do on Zoom. Uh, or, so I might pass out slides like this to the room, or you know, handouts like this to the rumors. They've got a bunch of skills. The Zoomers see this, the rumors, the rumors, the Zoomers call out what they see, the rumors circle, right? And then you saw the vice versa with the Zoomers answering on um, um, Google Forms and the rumors being the ones who call out. Okay, so I think that is, oh yeah, we can show a couple of these other things, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have some higher level conversation cards. Uh, oops. 
yeah, so these are things we can have students in breakout rooms um, going through and answering the, um, answering the questions. Um, we actually, I, I don't do it, but we, I have a couple of colleagues who will put roomers and zoomers in the same breakout room. Have you ever done that? No. Have, yeah? Yeah, I have, Eric's great at it. I, for me, it's, I'm not quite there yet, but they'll actually have roomers and zoomers in the same breakout room asking these kinds of questions to one another. Okay, um, so just general conversation. Oh, and then the medical equipment information gap. So again, it's, so this is, I teach an advanced vocational um, English class for healthcare workers. And um, this is another activity that we'll, we'll do um, where, I mean, very similar, like maybe I'll show this to the Zoomers and the projectors turned off so the rumors can't see it. The Zoomers describe what it is. They don't say what it is, but they'll say, oh, this is something that we use for collecting a sample. Um, and then the rumors have to guess, oh, is it a specimen cup? Oh, this is something, go ahead. Yeah, this is something that we use um, to test if somebody uh, has a problem with their kidneys. This is, they need to use this to test for, um, yeah, this kind of thing, right? I, don't, I can't remember exactly what that is, right? But yeah, we might also here, let's go to, uh, yeah, so this, um, this is, so again, back and forth with the rumors or zoomers, right? I show the rumors, the zoomers can't see, they, they call it out. I show the zoomers, the rumors can't see, they call it out, and then we'll go to one-on-one -on -one and that sort of thing. Um, so I think, you know, I, I don't know, I know we had somebody in nursing here, that might be a high flex activity that you can do, uh, something along those lines. This is obviously pre-healthcare, <laughs> uh, but maybe, maybe you've got some ideas about things that you can do with high flex. So I think, do we have any questions or comments? Yes? Canvas. Everybody does. That's not just the. That's not just the oh, Zoomers. Everybody everyone. needs to work you asynchronously on. Uh -huh. So they have to do synchronous work in class, okay. which is either on Zoom in person or Zoom only, and then they all have asynchronous work they have to do. So yes, they might do some things on our LMS synchronously, but they will also have to do some things asynchronously, like for homework. <laughs> We can call it homework, yeah. Okay. But they uh -huh. don't do it like in the class. Okay. They might do some things in class. It depends yeah, on the yeah. teacher. Yeah. Okay. But they definitely have to do some. I mean, I think I like to think about asynchronous work as being like what we used to call homework, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, other questions? Yes. So if you have, well, what we have often is situations where like one will be needed on the courses and mm -hmm. someone else is not. So do you send different lists of kind of students that you need to help us teaching? Or are you like, yeah, like call out, like a whole bunch of pictures, but it's just like one? Yeah, I'll still do that. I, I've had that too, and it's not ideal. I mean, I had I had that once last summer, and it wasn't great. But yeah, I still I still make them do stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. We don't. They can make the choice every single time. I think it depends on the class, but you said, Gia, you had about 18 to 20 students in person? Yeah, and so my class was intermediate level. So once the student gets familiar with online, I do notice towards the end of semester, and it's also because weather, there was a lot of rain mm -hmm. towards the end of semester, so I did notice more people were online compared mm -hmm. to the beginning of semester, yeah. I mean, I even had students say to me, as it starts to get colder and darker earlier, I'm going to come on Zoom instead. Yeah. I've had students have to go back home to their country and they can still join on Zoom. Right. Um, you know, I, I would say in my classes, it's probably about one third in, in person and two thirds on Zoom, but I think it really varies depending on, depending on the discipline and the course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So for, yeah, they, uh, when it's CASAS testing, everyone is encouraged 
come to now I did have five four or five students they just they just couldn't come to campus and I created a separate reading assessment for them and I required them to start their video the whole time put them in the breakout room with my PA so my PA was monitoring them doing that online test yeah Uh, uh, yes, I gave, yeah, I gave them a, a access code for their, uh, because other students already take the um, CASAS testing, so they don't need that extra reading test. But for those students who didn't take the CASAS testing, they did the Canvas online testing. Yeah, we, we, yeah, but yeah, it requires more PA one-on-one -on -one So we just didn't get that support the last semester. But before, I think we did online CASAS test. Very, very time consuming. I have so. to say, I, I don't secure tests when I give them to the students at home. I, what would be their motivation for cheating? Why, they don't get a grade in our class. Um, their, their, their motivation is to be able to use English, to, to be able to be competent in English. And so, I mean, uh, yes, right, right, yes, yeah, so I think that, yeah, that definitely would require more security. For me, it's a little bit hard, but the speaking assessment, I would say it's my online student did even better because my online students are kind of the students who are more comfortable with technology. Yeah, um, but with the writing assessment, I can't really compare because in-person students were taking the real CASAS testing and the online version is something that I, you know, I take a look at the CASAS testing, created something similar, but I couldn't copy the questions from CASAS testing, so. So Gia is going to show you some more fun activities, mm -hmm. fun interactive. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to share with you is Jamboard. So it's activity, but also it's a very simple tool that you can use for HyFlex class. As mentioned, uh, you know HyFlex teacher is already doing a lot of juggling. So a very very simple tool for the teacher and for students is really essential. So the reason we chose Jamboard is it's very easy to share with in-person students, online students. I will show you in a little bit. Uh, I usually just copy the link for my Zoom students in chat, and I will show you how to quickly generate a QR code so the in-person student can quickly scan. Uh, the students don't need to log in. Really teaching beginning level students, I don't one extra step for the students and for myself and also some people complain about the the features for Jamboard is too simple but I feel like for my students when they're low in literacy and digital literacy it's actually a good thing to have simple features okay so uh, here I'm gonna show you some examples how I use the Jamboard the first one can be used for any level it's just a word map and student as you can see the features are very simple right here I usually just ask students to create a sticky note they put their name save it and they could easily drag it to the country okay so that's an activity even though it's not ESL but it could be a great community building activity and the next thing I want to share with you is a reading comprehension activity I did with my intermediate level um, ESL class is I put students into several groups and assign a group leader and a note taker for each group and I just copy paste those jam boards and they would work together read the article together answer all questions one of the students in the group had to scan the QR code, get the Jamboard, and record all their answers. So this is really a great activity for reading comprehension group um, practice. 
Um, yeah, so they're all the same questions, but they got answers from different groups. Uh, this is the, uh, you mean the background, right? Okay, so, yeah, so, yeah, I made the background from Canva. Canva, you design that, and then you just set the background and change the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And another activity is discussion. So when we talked about what are some, you know, good neighborhood behavior, what are some bad neighborhood behavior, and students can just create the sticky note and put their answers there for discussion. Okay, and another thing we did is a vocabulary review. So before this lesson, we did a reading and we learned a lot of vocabulary. So I gave them some time to type all the new words they've learned in the previous lesson. Then I put the students in groups. They each need to work on one vocabulary, gave a sentence, find a picture, gave a definition. And it's very simple for students to find a picture. It's right here. The students could add image and go to Google, um, Google Images to search. And usually when I divide the groups, the group leader, you, I know it's more tech savvy <laughs> being able to use these tools. And at intermediate level, it's much easier to show them how to use those features, yeah. Okay? Oh, thank you. Thank you, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, this group I taught, they were really very dedicated students. Yeah, I had one student, I know his, his taking the class at the same time he's working because I saw that he's in the lab. So sometimes he has to leave the desk to have meeting with his boss. <laughs> and other times, I, I, I don't know, probably he's monitoring all the machines, everything, but he's taking the class at the same time, so. <laughs> yeah, okay. So the last thing, uh, yeah, do we have time? We have a little yeah. bit of time, we could try. So let me show you. Okay, so this, is, this can be easily adapt to ESL literacy level. And uh, I just show students, create a sticky note with your name. And they could place the sticky note drag it into the calendar. Now I do want to remind everyone when you are using these uh, Jamboard, the thing is when you share, you need to make sure you change it to share. Um, anyone with the link can be the editor. And the problem, especially with low digital literacy students is they want to play with it. Sometimes they change my background. <laughs> so uh, I've learned that lesson. One thing to make sure it works is really remind them, only use sticky notes, don't change teacher's design. <laughs> and, and after you are done with the activity, quickly change it back to viewer and then share so mm -hmm. they could review. Because one time I forgot to change and when we went back to review, I realized one student changed the background, wrote her name. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so this is one thing that um, you need to be careful with, yeah. Okay, so are, are students using, it seems this is for rumors. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? Okay. They're using so, their phones to join and they're so, getting on too. Yeah, yes. so I'm gonna show you right here. This is where you could share. Click the link and there is an option, create QR code. And you don't have to save. You don't need to you know, prepare your QR code before the class. You just have it right there. Yes, and students could, so you can try it now. Yeah, so you Tell can us, all when do is it right your now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And this is a great community building activity. You know, when you have two students in the same month, they want to know each other. Oh, it's on the second page. You can go to the, so you can create one on the second page. Okay. So once I notice someone start to join, I'll say, oh, don't do that. Only create sticky notes. Sorry, it was an accident. <laughs> uh, don't change my design. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. I will keep, yeah. 
Oh, yes, oh, sorry. And I will keep saying, okay, don't change teacher's design. <laughs> don't move my boxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this is something I designed you know, earlier, but later on I usually just use a background so people won't be able to move anything on the background unless they change the background. <laughs> And everything. Just but they, I've changed. had students change the background. Oh, yeah, yeah, I ha I've had, yeah. Changed the background and wrote her name. So who <laughs> told me who did that? Okay. So is picking up on the size of the screen? Yes, that's fine right here. Let's see if. Uh, <laughs> Give you some time. I have to click on the plus and then get a stick. And then how do I put it on the background? Type, oh, uh, we need to go to the Yeah, next that's what slide. happens every time I first introduce uh, Jamboard. It's they mess up with the background. But once you oh, do it second it. time, third time, they know what is the purpose of this activity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you. Uh -huh. It doesn't work. Yeah, it is not changing. It, you need to go, it. you save it. But I, you need oh, to go okay. to the second. Um, yeah. See why. You, know. you need to go to yes. the second yes. um, page there is a, first oh, before yes, you try yeah. to. Okay. Yes. It's. Uh, so there's, there's, it's asking you to, to update. <laughs> oh, okay. So okay. Too but many moving no, parts is what not you, a good once, design. Once it does that, <laughs> so have the background. Uh, yeah, so as I mentioned, this is something it, I designed a, at the beginning of the semester. Later on, on I always use page. just one background okay. because people, um, yeah, they, they yeah, can't okay. control. It's always the background that I'm using is Canva. Canva, yes. So all other discussion, yeah. reading, yeah. comprehension, vocabulary, it's all a background that people cannot move. Yeah. But they could change they if change. You, they, they could, go yeah. to, yeah, background. So keep telling them, don't change teacher's design. <laughs> yeah. But so. Uh, so if we did a, a picture as a background, yes. it would be better, yeah. Much better, yes. yes. Yeah, and I, so I don't even use uh, Canva. I just use like Google Slides or something to make something like this. Uh -huh. But then you just, you save it. Mm -hmm. And then up here somewhere, you can choose set background. Yeah. And then they can change the background, but they can't slide boxes around like we're doing by yeah. accident. Yeah, so that will be yeah. much easier. OK. And then so if you guys, if your birthday month isn't here, up at the top of your Jamboard on your phone, you can click this. Okay, uh, so I'm going to start to change my background. And then you can see the rest of the months. That's exactly yeah. what happens in the class. So yeah, so it always happens this way the first time you use it. But as I mentioned, it does get better later on. Yeah. So I have a, actually a Google slide reminding everyone, don't change teachers, you know, design. Okay, any questions? Do you have it open on your, yes. on your phone right yeah. now? Yeah, uh, Johanna can show you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then you know, just, I don't yeah. know how Thank I got you. it, but Glad I got it. Glad to hear that. <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really nice, yeah. And it has the app, but actually I like that they don't really need the app to have all the features, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just so convenient. I share everything you said. I that because that's my only thing. Like I'm putting it in the chat or something, but yeah, this is so much easier. Right. I mean, the students at home, if they're using a computer and a phone, they can also use the QR code on their phone. If, you know what I mean? If they're watching Zoom on a computer, they can, they can also scan the QR code using yes. their phone. But most of our students, I think, are only on a phone. They're not yes. using two devices. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. They could get them. Yes. Uh, okay. yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, do we want to get in groups for discussion, yes. or we could yeah. do discussion share together? Yeah. We have like ten, twenty. Ten. We, we oh, I think we got ten more minutes. minutes. Oh, ten minutes oh, then. To, yeah, 
I put it on my thing. Okay. Yeah, it says 10, 10 to 11, 40. 11, 40. Okay, yeah. so maybe just ask someone. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Me? I'm doing that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we wanted to hear what, what your ideas are. What ideas can you share with us for engaging high flex activities? Or what have you tried that's worked well in your class? Anybody want to share an idea about an idea that they have? Yeah, any activities or tools we found that's really useful for high flex class? Nobody? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Diana. Uh, I think it's because I've been teaching online for four years. I always used to use Google Slides. So I didn't stop that with, mm -hmm. when I started teaching high flex. And it just made my life easier for keeping me on track. Mm -hmm. okay. So regardless of whether I was, you know, the student for in the classroom or online, they could all see the student slides. And if I had links, they were on my so it was more like to keep me on track, but mm -hmm. also so that both Zoomers and Roomers can see what I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, for me, I'm awesome. the same. I use Google Slides for no matter what modality I'm teaching in. Yeah. And I was doing that before the pandemic in my right. in-person classes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of almost like my lesson plan, like yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's great for the students, but it's also great as a lesson plan. Does anyone use um, Google Forms? Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. um, is anybody using Pear Deck? Or what's, what's the other one that's like Pear Deck? I can't remember. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's an interactive slide. So you can have the students actually like, you know, touching things, typing in answers, near changing pod? things. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Is it Nearpod? Nearpod. Yes. Yeah, Nearpod. Yeah. But that has um, more features. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, oh, Padlet is another thing mm, that yeah. I think Padlet. is really great. Yeah. yeah. Do you use Padlet? Does anyone, does everyone know Padlet? We're all pretty familiar with that. Yes. Yeah, that's a great one. And so one of the things I do when I create these jam boards and then the students do stuff on them and then I change to view so they can't <laughs> they can't edit them anymore or after we've created a Padlet, I post those in Canvas so that they can go back and look at them. Mm -hmm. And um, with Padlet, I, there's no need to change it because they can't change anyone else's. They can only add their own thing. So students maybe who didn't participate on that day can go back in later and add like my favorite food on Padlet or my favorite color or my wedding or something. Yeah. I personally don't use Kahoot. I use Quizlet. I use um, but, but I've heard that Quiz. I, I that, use the yeah. Kahoot. Yeah. The, Kahoot, the problem with Kahoot is every time it's only 10 participants. And I have more students than that. So, so some, I think so. It's only 10, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I use it. Oh, really? Okay, so maybe I need to get a teacher's account, but the one I use for Ventures is every time it only allows 10 participants, so some of the students in the classroom had to share one device, mm -hmm. so that's not very ideal, yeah. Yeah. Okay, but, but if... Quizlet works very similarly to Kahoot, like it's a, like maybe four multiple choice, mm -hmm. and yeah, the students can do it online, and the Rumors and Zoomers can both do it. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins is up there at the end, you yeah. know, and it doesn't matter if they're home or... <laughs> in person, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, I've had with my more kind of similarly to what you're doing on Jamboard mm -hmm. in my my more um, advanced level classes. I'll put the students into a breakout room, and then the roomers are doing just their their work in the room. But the zoomers are in a breakout room, and I'll share an editable Google Doc, and I'll have like questions on there. So you need to write your names all here. Um, you need to, for example, um, name three U.S. holidays, write the name, and describe mm -hmm. the activities people do on those holidays. And so then I can actually, you know, I have something to prove that they did the work, the way that you do when you're in class walking around and looking at their, right? And then we get everyone back together, the rumors share, the Zoomers share, you know, that sort of thing. Um, I've also had students, when we're doing our family uh, uh, vocabulary, like mother, father, sister, brother, uh, create their own slides or send me pictures and I'll make slides for them if they really can't do it, and give presentations. So I've had students who, and the Zoomers will come and stand up and the Zoomers were projecting, they can see. I've had Zoomers who were able to share their screens and give 
a presentation from Zoom. And the thing that really touches me, that really makes me feel, you know, like, you know how sometimes you just want to cry because you love your students so much? I've had students who attend exclusively on Zoom, but have made a special trip to come to class to give their presentation about their family to the classmates and dress formally when they do it, which is really so touching, you know? Um, okay. So uh, I think PDLS will upload the slides and have the recording, everything available, mm -hmm. right, on the website. So I, I'm, I'm just wondering how we are going to share the slides because these are the PowerPoints. But you do have our email right there. So if you do want to get a copy of the slides and the link to the teacher guide, mm -hmm. feel free to email us. We're happy to share. Yes, Cindy. Sharing. Okay. Okay, good, good. So you won't get that from the website, so make sure you take a picture of our email and email us. We will uh, forward this to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so any other questions or any other comments? We, we had planned to put you in groups so you could talk about your own ideas. Um, and I know that sometimes it's more like what the reason we do that is because people are maybe more comfortable brainstorming in little groups. Um, and we do have five minutes left. So do you want to talk to your group mates or do you want to just end a little five minutes early? <laughs> you guys are good. They're like, we're good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for attending, everyone. Thank I hope you. this thank was you useful. Thank you so much. <laughs>